Let's look into the lenses of life of two amazing Gamaba Awardees. First and foremost, Ginaw Bilog, gawad sa manlilikhanan bayan in literature and performing arts. Now, there are a lot of categories of Gamaba Awards, such as architecture, poetry, pottery, wood carving, weaving, but in this session, we shall only discuss literature and performing arts. Let's immerse into Ginaw Bilog's life, shall we? Ginaw Bilog was a Hanunua Mangyan poet from Oriental Mindoro, Philippines, born on January 3, 1953 in Mansalay, Oriental Mindoro. His contribution is that he was recognized for his effort in preserving the Mangyan poetry tradition of Ambahan. His legacy is that he maintained the Ambahan collection of his father and grandfather, which served as his inspiration in his end divorce. He shared both collections with other Mangyans and promoted them to other groups in every other possible occasions. So, Ginaw Bilog is instrumental in keeping the use of Ambahan as he passed his tradition to fellow Mangyan to continue the vibrant art of literature. In the left side of your screen, you may see here the bamboos. So, nakikita niyo dito na may sharp object which uh, is used to write the uh, by buying. So these are bamboo used by a sharp object, and this is a by buying etched in a bamboo. Okay, let us delve deeper into the artwork of Bilog. So, Surat Mangyan is Hanunuo syllabic script, the traditional way of writing of the Hanunuo Mangyans. Ambahan is recited during social events accompanied by various musical instruments. Traditional poetry which can either be sung or written down. So, you may see on the right side of your screen the Ambahan. It is written in by buying using sharp objects etched in the bamboo wood, just like what I've explained before. This supports the fact that even before the arrival of the Spaniards, Filipino already have a system of writing. Okay, you may see here the pictures from a documentary by Project Pakudos about Surat Mangyan and Aban, which was perpetuated by Kino Below. From the documentary, it was mentioned that these Surat Mangyan were used by ancestors to convey their thoughts. It's primarily used as a method of courtship back in the days. So, pwede natin isipin na para itong isang love letter but etch na bamboo. Actually, mas better nga because unlike paper na pwedeng mabasa agad, these bamboos can withstand water and be more likely to preserve. Amazing, right? Second list in our Gamaba Awardees is Masino Antaray, the master of instrument. Let's explore his life. Masino Antaray was a Filipino poet, born artist, and musician hailed from Palawan. Born on April 10, 1943 in Macagua Valley, he resided in Brooks Point, Palawan. Unfortunately, Intaray passed away on November 30, 2013 due to diabetes complication, leaving behind his wife and four children. Masino Antaray have numerous contributions. He mastered local traditions like basal, kulilal, and bagit, crucial to Palawan's culture. Masino Antaray was also skilled in playing instruments like the aroding and babara and adept in oral traditions. He is awarded the Gawad sa Manilikhan at Bayan, in his performance celebrated Palawan's indigenous and enchanting audiences with nature's melody. Antaray have amazing talent in playing and mastering different traditional instruments which made him a Gamaba awardee. He also incorporated the sound of nature in his instrument, making him remarkable. So here are the following instruments that Masino Antaray is proficient with. First, basal or gong, one or two big gongs, agong, and two small ring gongs hanang, accompanied by gimbal resting on a lateral platform. Next is kutiyapi, a Philippine boat lute with two strings and nine frets made of hardened beeswax. It is typically four to six feet long and crafted from a solid soft wood such as jackfruit tree wood. Now, aruding. 
a small bamboo instrument known as a jaws harp in English, which is blown near the mouth to produce sound. And lastly, babarak and blown flutes with a rig group around the blowing end, usually made of rattan. Samaan Sulaiman was born on the third day of March, 1953, and passed on at the ripe age of 58 years old on the 21st of May, 2011. Samaan Sulaiman was a Magindanawan musician. He plays a number of instruments, but is especially known for kodyapi. Kodyapi is a two-string fretted boat lute, ranging from four to six feet long, typically made from woods of jackfruit tree, which is a native solid softwood. Kajabi is named as one, if not the most complicated and demanding Philippine pre-colonial musical instrument, which also contributed to the impeding number of its practitioners, especially our today's youth, right? Despite all of that, Samaan Sulaiman has learned Kajabi when he was 13 years old from his uncle and has reached his peak when he was 35 years old, becoming the most acclaimed Kojapi master, teacher, and practitioner here in the Philippines. At his peak, he did a plethora of renditions of Dinalaydai, Dinapo, Minuna, Binalig, which are traditional songs played in Kojapi, embodying his remarkable skill and mastery of his instrument during uh, 1933 Proclamation 385, Samaan Sulaiman has received his Gamaba Award, recognizing his cultural significance in the Philippine arts and tradition, fortifying the importance of his existence when it comes to preserving our indigenous culture's art. Langdulay is settled in the Lake Cebu, South Cotabato, in the islands of Mindanao. She was born on August 3, 1926, and died at the age of 86 years old on April 30, 2015. Langdulay lived most of her life honing her skills in weaving tanalak. Tanalak is a traditional tiboli cloth weaved from the fine hair of abaca. Langdulay learned the art of weaving way back when she was 12 years old. So she spent most of her life doing weaving. Tanalak was used by the Tibolis for bartering and trading for things like horses and other necessities so that they could survive. <clears throat> the commercialization of the art soon became apparent and outsiders have come in dabbling their hands on the art themselves, trying to capitalize from the Tibolese culture and profit. Causing a change in the Tanalak's design proper, from much more difficult but genuine ones to easier to produce or mass produce ones. That change is what makes Langdulai a notable weaver and artist. Langdulai preserved and stuck on through the most genuine form of the art, never letting the industrialization of their culture take away the real essence of the art. And instead of dwindling down from antagonizing powerful capitalist forces, her tenacity when it comes to preserving the organic form of their culture's art gave her an actual upper hand in all planes of the industry. That makes Langdulai not just any traditional Filipino artist wishing to have their art stay alive, but true to their culture and life as indigenous people, leading her to receive the award of recognition uh, to her efforts in preserving uh, Tanalak at its truest form on the year of 1998. Salinta Monon was a Tagabawa Bagogo weaver from Bansalan, Davao del Sur. She received recognition for exemplifying the artistic and expressive qualities of the endangered Bagobo Abaca, ikat weaving known as Inaban. She received the Gawad sa Manilikha ng Bayan Award in 1998. Salinta Monon, the recipient of this award, 
has made a substantial contribution to the preservation and promotion of Filipino cultural heritage by showcasing extraordinary talent and expertise in her particular traditional art form. Another recipient of this award is Alonzo Saclang. He was a Filipino cultural worker and indigenous advocate who was recognized as an awardee of the Gawad sa Manilika ng Bayan. And he is a Kalinga Master of Dance and the Performing Arts from Lubuguan. He has also mastered the dance patterns and movements associated with his people's ritual. In addition to that, he is the founder of the Kalinga Budong Dance Troupe in 2000, he was given the Gawan sa Manilika ng Bayan Award. Sa Pedrico Caballero, kilala bilang Sinong Pedring ay iginawad ng Gawad Manilika ng Bayan noong taong 2000. Isinilang siya noong December 25, 1938. Galing siya sa isang angka ng ta mga tagapag-awit ng Epico at natutuhan niya ang mga epiko mula sa kanyang ina habang inaawit ito habang sila'y inaantok sa hagupit ng duyan. Nagsimula siyang gumawa ng kanyang mga likha nang pumanaw ang kanyang tiyahin at ina. Ang kanyang mga, mga gawa ay naglalaman ng tradisyon, aral at pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay ng kanilang pamayanan. Nagtuturo ng mga aral na ginagamit sa tunay na buhay at kung paano makipag-ugnayan sa kapaligiran. Ipinagkaloob kay Federico Caballero ng Kalinog Iloilo ang gawad manlilikha ng bayan noong taong 2000. Dahil sa kanyang pagsusumikap na mapanatili ang mga paniniwala, tradisyon at panitikang panaybukid noon sa pamamagitan ng paghimok ng mga mananaliksik at tagapagtaguyod ng kultura na isulat ang mga ito upang maituro sa mga nakabatang miyembro ng kanilang komunidad. Ang ilan sa mga kanyang likha ay ang Tikum Kadlum o itim na asong isinasalin sa Ingles, isang epiko tungkol sa pangangaso ni dati Paiburong, ang pagputol ng pahalagang buriraw ng kawayan, a yellow-colored variety of bamboo, ang malaking bayad na hinihingi ng maninila na halimaw, at si Makabagting mula kay dati Paiburong para sa pagkasira ng kanyang burgsak or golden bell. Also, the epic of Amburukay, Tells the story of how Buyong Paiburong's daughter came to captive of the witch Amburukay and her brother Makabagting. Uwang Ahadas Sa taong 2000, ang musikero mula sa Bohebese, Lamitan, na si Uwang Ahadas ay iginawad ng gawad sa manlilikha ng bayan ng Pilipinas bilang isang pambansang kayamanang buhay ng pambansang komisyon para sa kultura at mga sining. Si Uwang Ahadas, isang bihasang musikero at miyembro ng Lamitan Yakan, Family Ensemble, kilala bilang eksperto sa tradisyonal na instrumental na musika ng mga yakan ng buong yakan domain. Natutuhan niya ang mga batayan sa pagtugtog ng mga instrumento ng perenggyan kwentangan sa pamamagitan ng pagmamasid sa mga nakakatandang yakan. Ang mga instrumentong ito ay naging kasama na ni Uwang sa kanyang buhay. Sa pagpapahalaga at pagkilala sa kausayan ni Uwang at sa kanyang malalim na pagunawa sa kultura ng mga yakan, ang lahat ng kanyang pamayanan ay naging kanyang mga estudyante. Marami sa kanyang mga alagad ang naging panalo sa kataunang komposisyon sa musika na ginanap tuwing Lamilamihan Festival sa Lamitan. In 1995, he mastered all of the yakan tradition instrument at the age of 20. In 2000, National Living Treasures Awardee known as Gamaba, Gawad sa manlilikha ng bayan. In 2015 up to present, he continues to travel outside of Pasilan to teach and promote tradition to this day. The weaver Derhata Sawabi was a Filipino. Since farming, which is popular source of income for parang families, is not effective for her, Sawabi, who is unmarried, makes her living by weaving. Well known in Parang Sulu for the Pishapit a traditional tausug cloth tapestry that the Hulu people use as the head covering. She was granted the distinct of being the 2004 National Living Treasure Award recipient. The geometric design known as peace is thought to have originated from the Indic mandala, while shabit represent the hook and techniques. Filipino 
artist Eduardo Tubig Mutug is a sculptor and metalsmith. He is recognized for having mastered the art of pinokpok, fish and tail stamping decoration onto metal sheets. Mutug uses bronze, wood, and silver to produce pieces that are both secular and important in nature. This includes altar, carrozas, mirrors, and retablos. One of the examples of his artwork, the retablo, refers to a devotional painting, particularly an acceptable work of popular or folk art that incorporates traditional Catholic church iconography. Born on June 25, 1925, and died on April 2, 2013. She was a Filipino master mat weaver and teacher from the Salma indigenous people of Ungos Matata, Tandubas, Tawi-Tawi. She was credited for creating colorful pandan mats with complex geometric patterns. You might be asking why, kung bakit siya included sa Gamaba Awardees. Well, first is, masyadong complex yung pattern niya to be created by anyone in her community. And second is, sobrang precise and detailed ng mga details niya sa mga weave na ginagawa niya. Favorite colors ni Haja Amina Api na ilagay sa art niya ay red, yellow, and purple. Makikita niyo yan dito sa example na binigay ko. Dominated ng red color, yung fabric na to, na merong yellow and purple shades. Na included din ng green kasi usually talaga 8 shades of colors yung nilalagay niya. Alam niyo ba na hindi lang master artist si Haja Amina Api? Isa din siyang master mathematician. Dahil sa sobrang precise and detailed nung fabric niya and sobrang symmetrical, nagko-compute actually siya ng placement ng threads sa fabric niya para symmetrical and perfect in every way yung kakalabasan ng product. Fortunately, hindi endangered yung skills niya sa pag-weave dahil naituto niya na to sa mga apo niya and sa mga anak niya before pa siya mamatay. Next, we have Teofilo Garcia. Born on March 27, 1941 and buhay pa siya ngayon in the age of 82. Known for crafting tabungaw hat a type of Ilocano hat made from variety of gourd known locally as tabungaw. Yung skills ni Garcia sa paggawa ng hat ay nakuha niya pa sa grandfather niya na 15 years old siya. Yung main purpose ng tabungaw hat ay para maprotect yung nagsusuot neto sa araw at sa ulan. Ginagamit rin to ng mga high school students sa graduation nila. Lastly, we have Magdalena Gamayo. Gamayo, August 30, 1924, nabuhay pa ngayon actually, 99 years old siya. Uh, is a self-taught on how to execute the traditional patterns of Inabel. Binakol yung whirlwind pattern, inuritan geometric design, kusikos, orange-like spiral forms, and sinansabong, flowers. She became best known for weaving the sinansabong, since it is the most challenging patterns among the four. Yung apat na maliliit na embedded design na makikita nyo dyan sa example, ayan yung apat na binanggit ko kanina. Yung flowered like dyan ay yung sinansabong. Ayun yung pinakamaster ni Magdalena Gamayo. Even among her own co-weavers, mahirap daw talaga ang pag gawa ng sinansabong na pattern. 15 years old lang din si Magdalena Gamayo nung nagsimula siyang matuto and manood sa mga tita niyang nagwi-weave ng Inabel during World War II. Ginawa niya rin coping mechanism yung pag-weave simula nung namatay yung only child niya.